Good morning. Welcome to what day is it? <laughs> it's Monday, but who knows what day it is because we're all on lockdown and quarantined and nobody knows what day it is and everybody's been inside and you may have been seeing lots of advice to get outside and go outside and be in nature because it's soothing and grounding and healing. But what if you are not an outdoorsy person? I like to say I'm indoorsy. And so I wanted to introduce you to my friend. She is a nature-based nature-based mentor and life coach. Her name is Lynn Trotta, and she's the outdoorsiest, badassy woman I know when it comes to anything having to do with being outside. And so I'm asking her today to teach us some strategies for outdoorsy reconnection for indoorsy people. And so I'm going to turn it over to Lynn and just have her teach us whatever she needs to teach us. So Lynn, I'm going to mute myself because of the feedback okay. happens, but like, please just take this and run with it. <laughs> okay. Tell us how to get outdoors. I got you covered. Uh, and thank you, Ms. Jen. I, I love my Jen so much. Um, so something that I love to talk initially about with people who one of their first things they say to me is, I'm not a nature person, or Jen says, I'm indoorsy. And what is really important is truly understanding that everybody's sense of comfort outside is different than everybody else's. So I am not the person who's going to tell you, go plant a garden if someone's like, I don't like getting my nails dirty. <laughs> or if they say something like, I'm terrified of birds, I'm not gonna say, oh, you should go to Audubon and take a birding class. Everybody has their own gateway drug into nature and it's going to be different. And I am, I am loving and I am accepting of everyone's comfort when it comes to outside. So that being said, uh, one thing you can do is think about first if there was anything that you did as a child that you really loved doing outside. So for some people, they might say, I liked building fairy houses, or I really loved collecting leaves, or I loved going to the beach and collecting shells. So that is an indicator for me of if you have already had some type of relationship with nature as a child you can start there again. So if someone were to say, I loved collecting leaves, then go walk around your yard and just pick up leaves. It doesn't need to be anything more advanced or explicit than that. I'm not gonna have you make a wreath crown. I'm not gonna have you find the daisies and do all that sort of thing. Um, so that's just one interesting thing that you can get started with. The next thing are three foundational practices that you can get in touch with nature with. So things that even, even if you don't want to physically contact the outside world, you can still do these things. You just have to go outside and stand in your yard, right? So one of them is giving thanks or offering gratitude. And this has been going around the scene of the coaching world and the self-help world for years now, right? Is the importance of gratitude and how it creates a positive feedback loop within our brain to focus on the good things, and it reduces our stress level, and it brings down our cortisol levels, which reduces our belly fat, right? It's got all of those absolutely straight line things in our brain. So one thing you can do is to go outside, le legit, just stand outside, and give thanks for all of the things that you can see. So if there's a tree in your yard that you know potentially when the snow melts, it's going to, it's going to flower, then offer gratitude for the fact that this tree is in your yard and you know that it has pink flowers and it's gonna make you happy for two weeks, right? And then offer gratitude for the sun because without the sun, we wouldn't be here on the planet. And there's truly no right or wrong way to give thanks, but when people are just starting out, I say stand outside, take a deep breath and offer gratitude for the things you can see. Do you have a question? Yeah, so I want to talk more about this idea of gratitude because mm -hmm. it can be a heavy word for people, especially people who are feeling really low and conflicted and mm -hmm. depressed or anxious. Like, um, and what I love that you're offering is it doesn't have to be like really uh, deeply philosophical or like, you know, you don't have to go, like you're just saying, 
wow, okay, I, I see this tree and I know that the blooms are coming and I'm thankful for that. Like it could really be, gratitude doesn't have to be this be end all and be all thing that everybody thinks it needs to be. It can be very simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why starting with the tangible things, the things that affect your life. If you're standing in your yard and you turn around and you see your house, gosh, a lot of people don't have houses right now and they're quarantined in gigantic stadiums or, you know, there's, there's a wide variety of things, especially just right outside that make our life possible. And the sun and the moon are really big ones for me too, because without them, just like with the planet, we wouldn't be here. And no matter the ebbs and flows of my life, um, I can always at least take a breath and say, I'm thankful that the sun is here and it's making my body feel warm. And then I'm thankful that the birds are here to provide the soundtrack to my day. And it's just background music for me. Um, and that being said, you know, I hadn't thought about that in a while, about what you just said about how gratitude can be really heavy for people sometimes. And there was probably one of my lowest days that I've had where it was during a time where I was going to sit spot, which is a nature meditation, which is going to be the last thing I talk about. And you basically just go and you sit outside. But part of my practice for this was I went every day for just over five years and I gave thanks and I did a, a specific type of sensory meditation where you just open up your senses. And there was one day where I was having a real crap day and I went out and I sat down and full on like emo teenager style, like crossed my arms and went like, I'm not, I'm not going to give thanks. My stupid gratitude. I hate gratitude. I'm not thankful for anything. Blah, 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 blah. And I sat there for a moment and allowed myself to stew in the yuck and a chickadee, these little black and white birds came out of nowhere and one landed on my shoulder. And then one landed on my leg and they did this dance around my whole body where they were landing on my head and my shoulder and my arm and my knee. And I just sat there marveling at this whole thing that was happening. Like, and, and then I started to sob because it, the, the message that I was getting was that no matter how low I am and no matter what emotions, whether it's anger or rage or grief are coming up within me. I can always go outside and the earth, the land and its creatures can hold it, even if I can't. So even in my dark places, I will be loved and accepted outside. And it was, it was one of the more magical moments of having that realization. And at that point, I was able to get that moment and it got me through the day. I vanished for a second. Good. The, the, the point I'm hearing here is um, you don't have to go out with an expectation that things will be fixed. You don't have to go out with an attachment to the outcome. Just, just go out and the first step, your step one is go outside and give thanks. That's it. That's it. Okay. And without like, and not making it mean something more than that. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's nothing, you know, your a million dollars is not going to get dropped on your porch 10 minutes later. And <clears throat> Not everything is going to be a magic pill, but it will at least, it's at least a really easy for me and delightful step to remind myself that I'm alive and I'm here and, and there are things that are supporting me in this universe, even if it's just the air that I'm breathing. Thank you for step one. What is step two? So step two is to, um, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to flip that. So Sit spot, which is what I had just mentioned, is what you can do where all it is is finding a place outside and sitting down. It can be in a lawn chair, it can be on the grass, it can be on a rock, whatever feels good and comfortable within your body. I'm noticing that when I was younger, I used to really love to sit on the ground with my back against a rock. Now that I'm over 40, I really delight in sitting in chairs. <laughs> So go with whatever feels nice for your body. And if you want to go out in the morning with your coffee or tea and just sit in a ray of sunshine or sit under the clouds and pay attention to what's happening around you, that's, that's really all sit spot is. 
it's breathing and being present. And if birds are going by, watching the birds. If, um, if ants are moving along, having their happy little day, just watch that. And again, this is, it doesn't need to be anything big or organized or overt. Just go and sit for five, 10, 15 minutes. If you can sit longer, sit longer. So you do this every day? I used to do it every single day. Like I had said, I, there was a period of time where I went religiously mm -hmm. and now that, and then I would go sporadically and, I would go when it felt right for me. Mm. So now almost every day I'll wander around the garden and I'll, I'll have a seat and I'll just pay attention to what's happening. Um, I do recommend when people are starting out to do it every day, like give yourself a challenge of, even if you have to tell yourself it's hiding from your children yeah. for 15 minutes <laughs> outside, no matter how cold it is, just run outside somewhere and just mm -hmm. like, I need to go check on something or I'm going to get the mail. <laughs> um, then, then when you go, just sit and breathe. And so and then, what are some of the outcomes you've noticed when you do your sit spot? So when I was going religiously, there was the absolute bare minimum of I would feel less stress. Mm. And there's all this scientific data now that if you look at a nature scene even, or being outside for 20 minutes, it decreases your cortisol level, it increases your pain threshold, it boosts your immune system. If you are sitting outside, maybe not in Syracuse, but in the yeah. sun, you get vitamin D, which also boosts, boosts your immune system. And you can feel it. It's palpable. But there's also, you know, I suggested going for 15, 20 minutes, whatever you can. But there would, there's a time, there's like a magic time, almost like if people exercise, they can exercise to the point where they feel like the endorphin rush. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it's, the exact opposite for sit spot, where if you go outside and you sit down and you breathe, there's a moment where you can feel all of the peace hormones come in and your body just sort of goes ka-chunk. Mm. And some, some of my people that I've worked with call it the exhale, where it's like they don't even realize that they were holding their breath mm -hmm. or they, don't, they didn't realize that their shoulders were up next to their ears until they sat outside for a certain amount of time. And that magic moment is different for everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you go and then you experience that sort of melting point, mm. then you know you've arrived. So I love that, the, the melting All point. of the muscles sort of mush. Love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what is step three? Step three is an addition you can do to sit spot, or you can do it, and all of these can go together sit spot, gratitude, sensory meditation. You can do them all at your sit spot or you can just do them one at a time. So the last one is the sensory meditation where unlike other types of meditation where you are intentionally trying to block the world out, this is intended to bring the entirety of the world in. And what happens is when you turn your senses on one at a time, you sort of go into an animal-like state where you are seeing everything around you, you're hearing everything, you're smelling the air, and you're turning on your sensory receptors in your skin to the point where data is flooding your brain so that you can't have thinking thoughts. It's almost like your computer like going, like all of this information is going so fast that it has like a shutdown moment, you know, like the swirly rainbow of death um, if you're on a Mac. Um, but doing that and allowing in all of the external information from the world, it shuts down the monkey mind or the thinking mind. So, and all it is, is to begin by closing your eyes because we're predators and our eyes our humans are, we're not, um, our eyes are a dominant sense. So if we turn that off, it gives us the ability to open up our other senses a lot easier. So if you close your eyes and take a deep breath and just focus on all of the sounds that are happening and doing this outside is really great because there's more variety and there's greater um, variance of texture of sounds as well. 
So you're gonna hear the birds really far away. Of course, you're gonna hear an airplane. And if you're in suburbia, the damn leaf blower, right? It's gonna eventually go. But you're also gonna hear uh, dripping sounds and um, squirrels shuffling in the leaves and somebody's gonna be making a nest somewhere in the treetops. So if you just turn on your ears and listen to all of that and just get curious, you don't have to name what it is or even pretend like, like, oh, I should know that bird sound, or that's my neighbor taking the garbage out. Just be curious and take it in. And then still with your eyes closed, even if um, you're going to leave your ears turned on, and then just breathe through your nose and notice what you can smell. And then remembering that you're going to keep your ears turned on during that process. And can you smell the grass? Can you smell gasoline? Can you smell the coffee that you spilled on your shoe that morning? Just allow it all to come in. And then still with your eyes closed, you're going to open up your mouth a little bit and breathe through your mouth. And notice that you have the ability to taste the air, even in a couple of breaths. Or can you taste the, the water that you just had? Or can you taste what the, the laundry detergent that's coming off your clothes? What does that smell like? And then once that is all turned on, then just turn on your sense of touch. Notice that you can feel pressure on, the, on either your bum or the bottom of your feet, or that the wind feels differently on your face as it does on your exposed hands. And then after you've done that, then you can open your eyes. And opening your eyes into a soft gaze or owl eyes, as we call it, where you're not focused on anything, but you can see out of your periphery. It's almost like thinking softly as well, where you're not focused on anything. You're just curious and can take in everything. And if you can stay in a few breaths in that place of allowing in all of the information, then everything in your body is going to calm down and everything is going to feel slower and in a closer rhythm to the the planet because the, the earth, the land has its own really slow rhythm and you're going to be really in tune with that. There's so much that you said during your description of the sensory, the sensory meditation mm -hmm. that you probably take for granted because it's like breathing to you, mm -hmm. like you probably can go outside and just immediately step into that quietude right and for me everything you just described was like an absolute revelation <laughs> i go outside and i'm immediately looking around and i see the things that need to get raked or the fence that needs to be fixed like it's so um not peaceful to me mm. and so i love closing your eyes as a way to first shut off that major sense and then the other thing i loved that you said was you know those thoughts are going to come in like Oh, there's the garbage man. Why do they always have to come so early in the morning? Or there's the leaf blower. They're wasting so much gas, right? Like there's so many monkey thoughts that come into our mind that are just running from tree to tree to tree in mm -hmm. our brain. And I love that you just say, accept them all. It's just happening. You don't have to judge it, right? So mm -hmm. I loved that piece. Um, and as you were talking, I was like, this isn't hard. I can imagine myself being outside and just doing this. And um, I have made it hard, right? I have made, you know, me being indoorsy mean that I'm not, I can't be outdoors. I can't appreciate the outdoors. So your loving way of teaching us these, these steps, these three steps. And then within that third step, that sensory meditation, just the, just talking us through it. Like I could really imagine myself doing that. Oh, yay. If you can convince me <laughs> to go outside. I'm winning. Anybody. <laughs> anybody can do this and the reason that I really wanted to share Lynn with all of you today is because I'm talking every day about how to ground and center and calm ourselves in our life and in our businesses and just listening to her talk and describe how to get outside and uh you know you don't have to commune with nature you don't have to like you know wear Birkenstocks <laughs> like you don't have to be a crunchy person right like you don't and it doesn't the other thing I heard you say is it doesn't have to be hours and hours and hours. Nope. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> yep. Um, years ago, I was working with a woman who, um, she was a lawyer and 
every minute of her day was scheduled and was mm-hmm. super intense. Mm-hmm. So we invented these micro sit spots mm-hmm. where she would, um, I would have her go outside for five minutes and just touch something of yes. nature and to do a super quick uh, sensory meditation and say what she was thankful for. And then she would be inside and it's not going to give you the big impact like doing an hour long Zumba class is going to be, but, <laughs> but it's going to get you a little bit of the peace and the pleasure and the joy that, that you need to get through the day. Mm-hmm. And if you can do a bunch of those throughout the day, right. you can just, you know, stopping while you're taking the garbage out. Um, it right. makes a really big difference. Right. And this is a great time of year, noticing all the things that are coming up, you know, noticing the crocuses yeah. and the daffodils, which just got snowed on today. But um, <laughs> the forsythia is just about to bloom. Like, no, just noticing that is, I find yeah. very, very helpful. And I do that from actually inside because my house is full of windows. So I can, I can do that from inside. But one, one of the things I knew that I needed to do was get, get outside more. Mm-hmm. Lynn, if people want to follow you and learn more about how nature can help them feel connected to themselves and improve their lives, how can people... What's the best way for people to follow you and learn from you? Uh, probably either uh, on Facebook. It's Lynn Trotta. And then I also have a free Facebook group called the um, Earth Advocacy Group, where we're um, talking about how caring for the land is also caring for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if they have questions, they can always email me. And my my website is lintrotta.com. Um, lintrotta.com. Mm-hmm. What is the name of your Facebook group again? Earth Advocacy? Uh, The Earth Advocate Mentoring Group. Okay. And what do you guys talk about in that group? We talk about everything from um, um, sustainable things you can buy in the grocery Mm -hmm. store to how people are refueling their hope for the future Mm -hmm. using nature connection practices. What I'm finding... Go ahead. Sorry. Well, what I'm finding a lot of people say is that they're feeling um, some despair and some sadness um, with the the state of the future with the climate crisis, mm-hmm. um, and and what's happening right now with the pandemic is sort of in, it's involved in the in the whole thing, where it's it's just a it's just another way that the world is shifting from underneath us Mm -hmm. and we need to come together as uh, enlightened individuals to form a healthy, positive community where we are supporting and lifting each other up in the process. Would somebody like me be appropriate for that group or is it for people who are more like um, kind of down in the environment sustainability world? Um, Everybody who comes in finds a place because we oh, are so nice. non-judgmental. Uh-huh. Um, everything is, is loving and positive. Um, uh-huh. But we've had people come in who have, you know, they're not, they don't recycle or they've right, never right. really thought about what it would be like to move toward a zero waste lifestyle. You know, so there's things that people are learning when they're coming in. Um, and there's also people who are talking about how to make their own oat milk and how to do, um, you know, had a grocery shop without a single piece of plastic. But because we are a completely shame-free zone, mm-hmm. um, it's been nice for everybody to come in and feel like they have a place there and just That's even huge. just watch on the periphery. That's so huge. I know that your way is very loving and gentle, so I have no doubt that you've created a beautiful community there. And I'm really glad you told us about this because I didn't know that you were doing this. So this is awesome. Oh, great. Thank you, Lynn. Um, Thanks to everybody who showed up. And if you're watching in the replay, please feel free to drop any questions you have or comments because Lynn and I can go back and connect with you and answer your questions. But Lynn, really, thank you for your time today and your expertise. And I already feel calmer just by having you take us through that, especially that, that, that sensory meditation. I really appreciate that. Nice. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Lynn. Bye, everybody. Bye.